Yo, what's up guys? So today I'm going to teach you five forces out of 100. Yep, you heard that right. I'm a crazy man and I'm teaching you 100 different forces with cards. In fact, I've already taught 30 of them, I believe, by now. If you missed any of them, I'll leave a playlist down below to all of those so you can catch up. Let's get into it. Alright, so as per usual with these videos, the force card will always be the Ace of Spades, alright? So, this first force is called uh, Matches, and it was first originated by John Scarney. Then later, Lewis Jones has some finer details and touches on it, and uh, this is what it looks like. Alright, so for this, we'll need uh, some matches, alright? I'll get back to those here in a minute. For now, uh, for my shuffle deck, and we'll just need a few cards. Not the whole deck, just uh, maybe uh, just a few, alright? So... Now what we'll do is I'll take these matches and uh, what I want you to do is decide on however many match matches you want and take that number uh, out and put them, just put it back in the box, all right? So let's say they say a one, two, three, four. I think four is a good number and we don't need the rest of those. Now look at this, from a shuffle deck, from a randomly generated number of matches, let's see if we can get a match, all right? So all we do is we take one, two, three, four cards according to their number of matches and we put that card right there. Now from a shuffle deck, you could have had any one of these cards, you could have had any number of matches, but you chose the Ace of Spades. Now, believe it or not, no matter how many matches they put back in the box, we can always get to that Ace of Spades every single time, all right? So here's how it's done. So you want to have all the matches inside the box, and it looks like a random number of matches, like it doesn't matter, but the exact number you want is 11 matches in this box, all right? So it always has to be 11 matches in the box. And what you can do is you can get like a mini card or, you know, write your prediction maybe on the bottom or inside of this little tray here of your forest card. I didn't do that because you already knew that the forest card is the ace of spades, so it was unnecessary. But uh, for a presentation or a trick, you, that's what you can do, all right? So you want to just have this in your pocket or whatever. Now you want to have the ace of spades or whatever forest card you want on top of the deck. Now the number of cards that you put down on the table always has to be seven, all right? So always remember seven, 11, all right? Seven cards, 11 matches. That's that's your key numbers that you'll always have, all right? So to get um, your setup, you want to have the ace of spades or your fourth card third from the bottom of that seven card packet. So the way you do that is you push over three cards. That's three, two, two, all right? So just remember three, two, two, and the ace of spades will always end up third from the bottom, all right? So again, that ace of spades is on top, and you just want to make it seem random, all right? So we just need a few cards, uh, maybe maybe about that many, and in your head, you're just going three, two, two. So let's go over all the outs uh, that will be coming into play uh, with the matches that they take out, all right? So I'll turn the ace of spades face up so we can always follow it, all right? So the ace of spades, third from the face is always our fourth card. So Let's get into this. So what you want to do is dump all the matches out. So let's say they don't want to take any matches out, and that is an option. You can say, look, you can put a handful of matches, you can put one match, or none at all. It's all up to you. So if they choose to leave all 11 matches on the table, you can always get to the forest card. So we'll start at the top with 11, all right? So for this, what you'll do is you'll just count 11 cards from the top to the bottom of the packet like this, all right? So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And look at that, the ace of spades is on top ready to be forced. If they do one match, that'll leave you with obviously ten matches, all right? So they put one match in the box and say we don't need those, all right? So you have ten matches here, and let's do the same thing. However, this time they'll do it face up, all right? So eleven was face down, ten is face up, all right? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So to recap, 10 and 11 are the same with that counting like this. Uh, 11 is a larger number, so it's face down. 10 is a smaller number, so it's face up. That's all you gotta remember for that. So next, two and three are also the same, all right? So let's say they put two matches in the box and say, uh, perfect, that's two matches. Now what you'll do is you'll turn the packet face up and just go one, two, and then there's your force card. Uh, same thing for three, if they chose three, obviously is third from the face, so you just count one, two, three. Now four and five are also the same, all right? So check this out, that's one, two, three, uh, four. 
in the box and from this you just count from the top so that's one two three four and then you arrive at the fourth card because it's fifth from the top right or third from the bottom all right so same thing with five they choose five one two three four and five so moving on to the other outs if they choose six uh if they choose one two three four four, five, six, and put them back in the box. You always say, look, we don't need the rest of those. You chose to leave five matches on the table. So again, we just revert back to that one, two, three, four, five, and you get to the force card. So it's either they put the matches in the box to use or the matches they leave behind on the table to use. Again, if it was seven matches, uh, four are left on the table. So it's against one, two, three, four, get to the force card. If it was eight, you know, three matches, so it's, you know, one, two, three. If it was nine, you know, one, two, because two left on the table. If it was uh, 10, then you would just do the, the face up, one, two, you know. So to really recap, your, your target numbers are always 10 or 11, two, three, four, or five, all right? So you can always get to those numbers however many matches they take off. So let's just go through some examples of one more time. If they choose one, then you know in your head that you have a, uh, you know, 10 matches on the table, which is one of your target numbers, all right? So you can always get to with those 10 matches. Again, with the two, turn the packet face up, count two cards. And like I said, it's very intuitive. Just uh, sit around and play with it, and uh, you'll be surprised at how quickly you can, uh, you know, grasp it and really get the hang of it. There's a lot of room for a presentation with this one. You don't have to use matches. You can use any sort of little objects that you want. So be creative with it, and uh, yeah. All right, so this next one is Ed Marlowe's drop switch for us, all right? So this is what it looks like. A spectator can just say stop any time as we deal cards in bunches like this. Let's say we stop right here, and uh, the card we stopped on is actually the Ace of Spades. A really cool for us. Ed Marlowe was just a genius, and uh, all his moves are just gems, all right? So the forest card, you want to have it on bottom of the deck. What I did is I put it, well, no, I didn't actually. I put it on top of the deck, and I shuffled it to the bottom of the deck like this with an overhand shuffle. So like this, and you just shuffle off, and then you can do a slip shuffle if you want to keep it there. Anyway, your forest card is on the bottom of the deck. Now what you need to do is get a pinky break on that bottom force card. All right, so you can either do that with a pinky pull down like this or in the action of talking and gesturing, you say, look, normally I have people pick cards like this, but I think I'll do it a little bit different today. And what I've done there is spread all the way down to the bottom card and then just put my pinky on it as I close up the deck like this, all right? So either way, you get your pinky break. Unimportant just as long as you have it, all right? So now what you're gonna do is start uh, spreading and dropping groups of cards like this and have them say stop any time. Now once they do, what's going to happen is you're going to seemingly put the deck over here and take that card they stopped on. However, what's going to happen is you're going to pick up the deck like this in middle grip, catching a thumb break where the pinky break used to be, and you're going to take the card and cross at the same time. But in the action, your hand actually covers the action and you're just dropping that card on top of that spread, all right? So you're here, all right? So as you go to take the card, your hand just covers that dropping action. This is exposed to you. That card just gets dropped, but that hand, as it goes to take the card, apparently that card covers that uh, dropping action like this as you set the deck over there. All right, so one more time at full speed. All right, you're like this, Just say stop any time. And uh, as I go over to take uh, the card, I dropped it. My hand covers the drop as I set the deck aside. And it looks almost perfect, all right? So again, in slow motion, uh, fully exposed. And you're here, you have your thumb break, or your pinky break, sorry. All right, just say stop any time. Once they do, I will, I will not cover it this time so you can see what's happening. As I go to put the deck over here, I just drop that card off as I take the card. But again, that hand covering is very important and is perfectly justified because you're taking a card, all right? So you're like this, and uh, that's a card I stopped on. And it's a very nice force, and I use it a lot, and I think you'll uh, enjoy it as well. All right, so this next one isn't really a force that has like a title, you know, it's just sort of a utility move that you can use for a force with some nice subtleties in play, all right? So I won't tell you what that thing is right now, so I'll just perform it for you and then I'll then I'll tell you what it is, all right? So what I'll do is I'll start uh, putting cards into my hand like this 
And uh, what I want you to do is just say stop anytime as I do this, all right? So maybe they say stop right here. And uh, the, the cool thing about this is that they could have stopped on any one of these cards. I mean, they could have had the Jack, the Two, the Seven, any one, the Queen, any one of these cards, or the Joker even, but they chose to stop directly on the Ace of Spades. All right, so the fourth card is on the top of the deck, and all you're gonna do is a small packet bottom deal. I mean, with a small packet, it's very easy. You don't have to do a buckle or anything, which I'll get into right now, all right? So, fourth card is on top of the deck, and you start taking single cards off the top like this into your hand, into dealing grip like this, and you ask them as you're doing this uh, to take a stop any time. Now, once they do, I mean, they'll never go past, you know, maybe 10 or so. And so once they say stop, it's very easy to just take the bottom card off, guys. I mean, all you got to do is a block pushover like this, and you have the bottom card. I mean, it's that easy. You don't have to do any of those fancy, you know, buckle, get ready, push out the bottom deals. It's not that complicated. Like I said, all you got to do is a push off, block pushover of all the cards, like an Elmsley count, right? So again, just take the deck like this, or the pack like this, squeeze it, and then push all those cards above the ace over, and you'll have that bottom card ready to be dealt right there. Now, what you want to do is make sure that there's enough misdirection so they don't suspect anything weird is happening, all right? So you could just stop anywhere, but uh, let's just check these cards here. Any one of these cards would have been yours, but you chose the ace of spades. Now, what you're doing here is you want to sort of you know, necktie your, your hand here so they can't really see what's happening with the packet, all right? So, like I said, this is exposed view. Do that pushover, and you have the card like this. But to hide it, you can do this. You could have had any one of these cards like this, and I've just done it. I mean, it's, it's invisible. All right, so, of course, a magician will know I'm doing a bottom deal because, you know, you magicians are magicians, all right? So, all right, once again, you like this. You could have had any one of these, but you chose the Ace of Spades. Not very complicated. I mean, it's very easy. So just, it's got to be motivated, though. All okay? right. So you can't be like, oh, right here. Let me see. Uh, oh, the Ace of Spades. It can't be like that. All right. So it has to be sort of flowy. And it has to be a natural thing uh, as to why you're putting that card off the side. All right. So a good thing to do is put it face down first and show those other cards they could have had. Like the putting down of the card doesn't matter. All right. So you always want to make the most crucial part of the thing seem not important. All right. So if they don't care about it. Or if you don't care about it, they won't care about it, all right? So once again, you're like this, ace of spades on top. Say stop any time as I do this. Stop right there. Look, you, have, you could have had any one of these. Uh, you could have had any one of these. Stop at any one of these cards, but you chose this card here, the ace of spades. All right, so this next force is called the one-handed slip force, and I like it a lot, and I think you will too, all right? So what happens is this. What I'm gonna do is just drop cards like this, Anytime you want to say stop, you just call it the word stop, all right? So let's go ahead and do it. Maybe you say stop right here. And now you could have had uh, this card here, or you could have had the next card, this one, the Ace of Clubs. But you stopped on this card, none other than the Ace of Spades. All right, so if you're familiar with a slip cut, uh, that's really all you're doing is the fourth card is on top of the deck, obviously. So if you're familiar doing with a slip cut, all you do is lift up half the deck like this and build a grip, take your thumb on top, and as you remove those cards to the table, your thumb re uh, retains that ace of spades like this. So that's all you're doing, but uh, you're doing it with one hand only, all right? So it's like this. They say stop any time. And sort of uh, side jog the packet like this, and all you're going to do is just release that upper packet like this, holding back that ace of spades like this. So it looks like you've dropped off that packet. Uh, which you did, but you've retained the Ace of Spades on this lower packet, which looks like it's the card they stopped on. So I'll do it at full speed with the card face up so you can really see what's happening, all right? So it say stop any time right here, and uh, you could say stop anywhere on these cards here, maybe these cards here, but you could stop on one card. Ah, the Ace of Spades. All right, so I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but everybody has a secret pin code to unlock their lucky card, all right? So everybody has a lucky card, everybody has a different pin code, all right? So let's just see what your secret pin code is, and I'll show you exactly how to find that out. The first thing you want to do is cut about half the deck off, all right? So uh, yeah, we we'll take away these cards that you didn't want. And uh, the first step in finding out what your uh, pin code is, is just count how many cards you cut off, all right? So you could have cut off any amount that you wanted, but this is the start of your personal unique pin code, all right? So let's count them. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Now, 28 
is just the start of your pin code, but uh, it's not it's not the real one yet. So what we got to do is go further than that, and uh, we take your numbers two and eight. We just add them together, and we get ten. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So your secret pin code to unlock your lucky card is actually ten, but that could have been any amount of cards. If you if you would have counted two cards, would have been totally different. All right, so everybody's lucky card is different. Let's see what your lucky number is, or lucky card is in this case. Oh, it's the Ace of Spades. <laughs> Alright, so I hope that you like that uh, that pin code lucky card presentation. It's actually a Roberto Giobi idea. Alright, so it's just a way to make the uh, that sort of mathematical procedure make a little bit of sense and make it a little bit entertaining, alright? So what you want to do Let's put your forest card 19th from the top of the deck, all right? So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 from the top, and you are locked and loaded, ready to blow some mines. So what you're gonna do to start the presentation is, I mean, if you want to, you don't have to use that pin code presentation, you can do whatever you want to, but uh, you're gonna have them cut off about half the deck, all right? So the cool thing about this is if you ask it, participant to cut off half the deck, they're really going to try their best to get it exactly half, all right? So you really want to sort of push that, all right? So we need about half the card, you tell them, all right? So they're, they're really going to try to get half, all right? So uh, they don't want to go past 30 is the main point, all right? So they don't want to go lower than 19 or above 30, all right? Or above 29, all right? So when they cut off about half, you ask them to count their packet. All right, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 again. I'm, a, I'm like a magician. Now, the great thing about this is that it's mathematical, right? So the fact that you just reverse the order of the cards, you can always get to it. Uh, it's kind of like the 10 to 24, same principle, all right? So you, all you do is you add the digits together. In this case, 2 and 8, you get 10. So you ask them to pick up the packet and count 10 cards. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And it's always going to be the ace of spades or whatever your force card is that lies 19th from the top of the deck. I hope you like that and uh, kind of, Try to come up with your own presentation. I, I just think that that pin code uh, sort of presentation is, is, a, is really nice and it's really um, in interesting and fascinating. And the person that he did it for was really blown away by it. Like she she couldn't believe it, all right? So it, it is effective and it does work and I highly uh, recommend it. By the way, this deck of cards that I'm using is called the Cody Get Cards. It's uh, Dan and Dave's newest deck. You can get it from Art of Play. And uh, I really love these cards a lot. I mean, I love everything that Dan and Dave puts out. But these Kodiaks in particular, I just love them. They look classic. They look, you know, elegant and fancy. And I really like the look of this Joker. In fact, I think I'm going to get tattooed. I think this will be my next tattoo just because I like it a lot. I love the colors and I love the whole idea behind this deck. Anyway, that's enough of me ranting and talking about tattoos and cards. So, uh, yeah. All right, guys. So, as always, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It means the world to me. It really does. And if you got value out of this video, please do me a huge favor. Like the video, comment below, something nice or something mean. It's up to you. Until next time, happy practicing. I love you guys.